Are you ashamed of me? I asked him. I didn't bring it up at the time it happened, which wasn't long after we made our first acquaintance. We were having one of our evening promenades, walking through the streets, taking in the sights, just talking, you know, feeling each other out, getting to know each other a little bit. When one of his friends runs right into us, I mean literally runs right into us, we are just walking down the street, and here he comes barreling out of a store with a drink in his hand, you know, oblivious. Runs smack dab into me. He's not what I've seen around before, kind of cute, kind of dumb, but the jackets in the back hand. Peeling combination. He always avoided me in the past, I always thought, what was his problem? Well, there we were, face to face. So Elbow Sprout introduced me to your friend. And he did. And we moved on, but I could tell something bothered him, something flustered him as that little guy seen us two together. Like he wasn't ready for it or something. Ah, a couple days later we were finding about something and he brought it up and he denied it at first, but I kept pressing because there's one thing a queen knows. It's just like a waitress knows a tipper, like a hooker knows a cop, a chili knows a score. He confessed to it, said he felt embarrassed for him to see us two together. Felt like he was introducing his mother. Well, at least I don't remind him of his father. He confessed and said that he'd never do it again. To me or anyone else, he promised. He'd always think for the best. I like the way that contrition could turn anyone to a little cherub. So I blew out the candle, and I let him make it up to me. Upon exiting the hospital, Billy placed his career as a magician on hold. He knew that as surely as he had developed an addiction to the pain-killing drugs so parsimoniously dispensed by the nurses, that he had discovered a compulsion which would prove over a lifetime to be an even more demanding mistress. He joined the Drama Club. <laughs> That universal harbor where highly confused, overly sensitive, socially challenged adolescents who find themselves adrift in a sea of disaffection go to lose themselves. Stella! And to find others. I'm always dependent on the kindness of strangers. In the process, it is not unheard of for a confused adolescent to learn a thing or two about himself. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Try as he might. And he'll kill you! Kill you! Kill you! He could not get his mother to acquiesce in his decision. But I've been cast, Mama. I'm gonna be in arms in the man. Never again would she set foot in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> up. So, a lifetime on the stage, yet never would he get to hear the comforting stomp of his mother's foot expressing approval of his exertions. These were the thoughts that now racked the old actor with anxiety, as in contemplation he measured the success or the failure of a career. Has it amounted to anything? The old man asked himself, looking back, a lifetime of work, and still he felt the stage a place he never truly belonged. A place with his ups. Alas, poor Yorick. And his downs. But you are, Blanche. You are in that wheelchair. <laughs> a lifetime spent in that refuge where the broken people go. Who don't belong. A place where ruination dances nightly with redemption. A place of magic. Presto. And taboo. Change <sighs> He even took a writing, uh, uh, he even took a stab at writing plays. And this is my adaptation of Farewell to Arms. <laughs> <laughs> but he found the world of playwrights to be one inhabited by cracks and crankpots. Yeah. Thus, acting remained his one enduring passion. Somehow he had managed to stumble upon this wayward tribe, this club, where the world's billies hide in plain sight, engaged in an unremitting chase of what? Just a heart. A 
another world of addicts grappling for their drug of choice, the savory embrace of an audience with whom they may find favor. A worthy substitute? Billy wondered. Perhaps. So, 
It's all just a wash of color. But his long hair is snapping back in the wind, and you can tell he's laughing. It just looked like him. The way it was. Mostly. When I saw that green flying saucer toy floating in the lake, that's when I knew. If I had any tears left in me, I might want to cry for that boy. I can't understand on God's green earth why a boy like that should be taken away. They got enough angels in heaven, don't they? It's us down here, us that needs them the most. All right, hold on just one minute. How do you navigate the stairs? <laughs> Here and might as well give it a once over. I'm really, really hungry. <sighs> Only take a couple of minutes. I'm hungry now. I don't want to wait until after acupuncture to get some food. I'll die on the table. We'll just take a couple of minutes. We'll look at all the exhibits that we wanted to come back to. Let's just say we saw them because we did. No, we didn't. <sighs> Everyone's seen these same photos a million times. Well, I'm sorry. Not all of us grew up in San Francisco. Hello, Jeanette McDonald. You left a stranger waiting outside the door. Those who don't know their own histories are doomed to repeat it. Or something like that. If we don't watch out, we'll start another earthquake. Yeah. Oh, and all of it uh, wearing bowler hats. That would be a disaster. What should one way to look at that I don't know. Ask Michael Brown. Hey, Brownie, what's on sale at Nordstrom's this week? I don't know, Mr. President. I'll get right on it. <laughs> Rolled up sleeves and used to the. Uh, the hyper-masculinity, you know, you know it is. Make way, make way! Emails come through that! <sighs> Look at all those people. Why are they so dressed up? They are waiting for a table at Farallon, which, by the way, we could be doing. Oh, well, look at these two ladies. You know, they're dressed in a nice smile for the camera. Meanwhile, the smoke is building up behind them from the rubble, and they're acting like a stopper in the park. Maybe it's the first time someone has to take the picture. They look so cheerful. Oh yeah, it was a nice day. They were alive. Disasters are kind of fun in their way. Fun. Disasters are fun. Oh well, yeah, they take you out of your everyday ordinary life and put you in another casting. Yeah. I don't see any corpses. Of course, they don't show pictures of thousands of dead bodies, Max. No, they show all the damaged buildings, all the pretty architecture reduced to rubble.